excited. I am because this is one of my favourite articles I've ever written. So today I'm going to try and avoid going off on tangents because this is stupid enough on its own. And just like to remind everyone before this starts, everything I'm about to say is 100% true. Marlon Brando was the quintessential Hollywood bad boy, and during his half-century long stint as the greatest actor in all of Hollywood, he spent a frankly heroic amount of that time not giving one ounce of a shit. If you want an example of how little Brando cared about other people or what they thought about him, you only need to consider the actor's attitude towards food. Fans of Brando are likely well aware that later in the actor's career he became hugely overweight, but few people realised just how ridiculous the actor's eating habits actually were. Perhaps the greatest example of this is when his second wife put a lock on their fridge. So do you want to take a guess at what Marlon Brando did when he walked into his kitchen and saw that his wife had put a padlock on his fridge? Did he find food elsewhere? No, no, no. He got a crowbar, snapped the lock, opened the fridge. Okay, now, what happened next? He ate everything? No, no, no. He ate exactly one thing. And do you know what it was? He took a single bite out of a massive wheel of cheese. This one's like my fridge. Well, I'm having none of that. And just, boom, opening it up, seeing a massive, comically large wheel of cheese, just taking a single bite out of it and then just shutting the fridge and walking out. As if to say, f you, you can't stop me. This is my food. <laughs> I'm not even sorry. <laughs> But that is just the tip of a very, very greasy iceberg. When one of Brando's girlfriends also attempted to curb the actor's ballooning weight by putting him on a diet, she got frustrated when Brando didn't actually lose any weight after a couple of weeks of being on it. She only later discovered that while Brando had kept to the diet during the day, at night he hired one of his friends to drive up to the side of the house and throw Burger King over his fence. And she only discovered this when she went outside at 2am and found Brando just ankle deep in Whopper wrappers, just eating endless Whoppers. Like, what are you gonna do? Can we all just agree for a second? Hero, for a start. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna stick to this diet until 2am. 2am is Brando time. Another equally as amazing story is when Brando was on the set of Mutie on the Bounty in Tahiti. Brando kind of got hungry during filming and for no other reason than f you, he was hungry. He had a plane chartered full of ham and champagne flown to his location so he could gorge himself on it in between takes. So was Brando always like this or was it just later in his career? No, he, was, he always had a problem with food. Like You'll see pictures of him as younger and he's a really, really in shape man. But his weight always fluctuated. The difference was when he was a young man he could obviously lose the weight for his roles. There are stories about them having to send people out to physically drag him back to the studio, because what he'd do is after he'd finished his take, he'd just wander off to a donut shop and eat 12 donuts. Or he'd eat entire roast chickens at lunch and a pint of milk. But because obviously as a young man, he could lose the weight for roles. But as he got older, obviously he lost the ability to do that, which is when his weight got worse. There was never a time in his life when he wasn't just shoving his face full of food. Try and stop him. You couldn't. I think you're underestimating how difficult it was to say no to Marlon Brando at the, like, the apex of his career. Like, he was like a puppy who could also have sex with your girlfriend whenever he wanted to. You could not tell that man no. On Mutiny on the Bounty, they wanted him in the film so bad, they put up with him airlifting Ham to his location. What else they put up with was him just refusing to say his lines. He'd turn up late every single day and then just demand rewrites in the middle of scenes. When the rewrites wouldn't happen, he'd just make up his own lines. I just can imagine other actors in the scene would say, well, it's difficult for us to do our jobs if Marlon doesn't say the lines that we've got on our scripts. So Brando was very adult about it and just put cotton wool in his ears and said the lines anyway. <laughs> just imagine that. He comes in late. He says, I don't like these lines. Rewrite them. They rewrite them. He still doesn't like them. So he starts saying his own lines. You complain saying, well, now I don't know what my cue is because I don't have your version of the script. You just make it up as you go along. He goes, oh, don't worry, I've got a perfect solution for me. Fills his ears up with cotton wool and says the lines anyway and walks off and starts eating ham and champagne. What are you going to do? But he got away with it because having him in your film was just that much of a boon. It was worth putting up with the crazy bullshits. When he did act, it was just that good. You don't understand. I could have had class. I could have been a contender. I could have been somebody. 
Wasn't Brandon famous for not wanting to learn his lines? He hated learning his lines. He would most of the time have them written on cue cards around the scene that either someone would hold or they'd be on bits of the prop that you couldn't see that were off camera. Or my personal favourite story is when he made a personal request to have them written on the naked ass of an actress he was sounding alongside. Really? Yes, in Last Tango in Paris, during the, uh, the love-making scene, the director asked him, like, Marlon, what can I do to help you do your job? And Brando said, how about you write my lines on her ass? And the director just said, no. <laughs> and he relented and had him written on a cue card. But he kept that idea in his head, and when he was part of the Superman movie, he personally requested to have all of his lines written on baby Superman's diaper. Presumably, as a nod to how shit he thought they were. While we're on the topic of Superman, Marlon Brando famously got paid the most of anyone who appeared in that film, earning considerably more than Christopher Reeve, the actor who played, as we all know, Superman. He was in the movie for about three minutes, didn't learn his lines, insisted they be written on a baby's diaper, and then got paid more than the guy who was playing the character whose name is the title of the movie. He was only on screen at the start, and then he appeared as a face for the rest of it. Well, speaking of the face, he actually didn't want to do that, so he put in another personal request to the director. Hey, do you think maybe we could have me not play Jor-El as a man, and maybe you could make him a CGI green bagel? You do not remember me. I am Jor-El. I am your father. Bagel? Yes. That's it's an actual bagel. As in a bagel, yes. That was a genuine request he made. The director, like, he had to appeal to him. And he made him eventually relent when he said, yeah, I read through the comics, Marlon. Nowhere in them does it mention that Superman's dad is a f***ing pastry. <laughs> and he went, okay, I guess I'll do the scene. Another thing Brando was famous for was picking up random objects on set and refusing to put them down. For example, in the film The Island of Dr. Moreau, Brando picked up an ice bucket, put it on his head, and then just didn't take it off. Obviously, they wanted Brando in the film so much. When he puts the ice bucket on his head and said, oh, I'm wearing this now, they went, okay. There's only two things they told him you can't do. One, you can't write lines on an actor's ass. Two, you can't make Superman's out of bagel. Other than that, ice bucket on the head, that's fine, Brando, as long as you save the lines. What, you don't want to save the lines? You want to make up your own? That's also fine. Oh, you want more money than the principal actor in the film? Okay, great. You want a, a chicken? Cool, get the chicken, but you're gonna come back to set later, yeah? Oh, I might do. Oh, okay. Great, we'll see you then. What I want to know is, did he do anything with Godfather? Because that's one of the ones he's most likely Yes! It's a habit of picking up things, even extended to the greatest film of all time. Joe the Cat? Yeah. That wasn't in the script. What? Do you know what it was though? He was on set. Oh, Brando, we're going to do a scene now. Do you mind putting the cat down? No. Brando, can you please put the cat now? <laughs> well, well, I guess it's in the scene now then. Yeah, it's the most famous part of that scene. It's been like, dissected and what does it mean? Like, Ooh, the cat represents all, ooh, his innocence, or he's stroking the cat so he has power over animals. No, 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 he just picked it up. <laughs> Brando just went, I like that cat, I'll have it. <laughs> Mine now. Even in his advanced age, Brando's ability to not give a shit didn't dull at all. For example, in the 90s when the actor sat down to write his memoirs, he decided to call up Ursula Andress, a woman who's been voted one of the most beautiful to have ever lived. Brando called Ursula, made small talk for a few minutes, told her she was very beautiful, and then casually asked, have we ever slept together? Marlon Brando called up one of the most beautiful women in the world because he genuinely couldn't remember if he'd ever slept with her or not. Wow. Yeah, that is a power move right there. I'm gonna call up the most beautiful woman on earth and just say, oh hi love, I can't remember, have I banged you? As a final testament to Brando's complete and utter inability to give what us humans know as f**ks and shits, Brando famously kept his Oscar, the award he got, the highest award in acting, and used it as a doorstop until he got stolen, at which point he called up the Academy and asked for another one. He had the highest award in acting, the greatest achievement and recognition an actor can ask for from their peers, and used it as a f***ing doorstop. <laughs> and then when he gets stolen, and they, people knew it was, open, it was an open secret that he didn't care about it and he used it as a doorstop. People would come around to his house, because, is, is that your Oscar? Yeah. When he got stolen, wrong him up. Can I have another one? No, use it as a doorstop, you prick. I don't know about you, but I really hope they one day make a Marlon Brando biopic and they can only get Nick Cage to play him.
Just imagine all the stories I've just said today, and now imagine Nick Cage doing a minute. Ca imagine Nick Cage doing this crazy Nick Cage face, breaking into a fridge and taking a bite out of a wheel of cheese like Tom and Jerry. Imagine Nick Cage getting Burger King thrown over his fence and eating it at 2 a.m. Imagine Nick Cage airlifting ham and champagne to Tahiti. Imagine Nick Cage putting an ice bucket on his head and screaming at people. Imagine Nick Cage requesting that a naked actress's bare ass be where his script is located. Imagine Nick Cage putting earbuds in and shouting incoherent lines at random members of the cast. Well, that's how he does all his films anyway, so it'd be perfect for this Marlon Brando one. I think you should do like and subscribe in the voice of Nick Cage. No, I can't do voices. I'm terrible at voices. Um, like, comment, subscribe. Thanks. It's so awkward. Everybody. It is awkward because, as you can tell, I was animated talking about Marlon Brando because I love that story, but this, not so much. I'm not in love with this. How about instead of trying to do a fancy one, I can just say, hey guys, if you enjoyed the video, like, comment, or subscribe. It's really short. I, I cut away to a different background. So me honestly telling the audience that I Really hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, like, comment, subscribe. That's not enough. I need to do a really long drawing one where I suck the audience's dick. You do. I need to do a long rambling 30 seconds. Oh, what should we do? We should do skits at the end. Do you want to see all those? We should do like the little skits where we say, oh, hey, you're a competition winner. You've won, you've won the right to subscribe. Oh, you've won. Just click this subscribe button right here to claim your prize of more videos. Like those sad who do that. <laughs> should do that. No, no, it's bullshit. No. I'm just going to ask the audience very nicely to like, comment, subscribe if you enjoyed the video. I think that's perfectly acceptable. Welcome back to the Untitled Shopping Channel. Here we are selling you some fantastic items that have been sent to us from all around the world. Our first item up today. Umbrella Ortano and Michelle Holloman have put together this incredible Shifty Joe sculpture. That sounds like a patron name, doesn't it? That's what it's actually it's called. It's actually called Shifty, called Shifty Joe. Joe. Yeah. As you can see, the technique used to create this piece is known as the Dandelay Moulding. And, <laughs> and the materials have been provided by one Aaron Klassen. We accept payments for this through the Kim Geisler Payment Service. This product itself is £189,347,682.10. CDBad was a manufacturer of some very incredibly unique products from back in the 1950s. And we were in, we got in touch with his nephew, Lyndon B. Johnson, who has given us a very rare item to sell to you today. And that is the Samuel Chesser pipe. This Andy Ruffle style pipe has been carved from one of the rarest types of tree out there, the Jason Ursenbach tree. As you can see by the intricate carvings, the style is very reminiscent of the Fez wearer, with a little bit of Nyx thrown in there. This product is available to you now with a massive, <laughs> a massive 80% discount. That's 80% off if you'd like to buy it, this pipe today. This next product, I tell you, this is the biggest deal we've had since we sold the Nyx last year. And it is the Cow Tessa Ball. I know many of you have been <laughs> I know many of you have been waiting for this product to come back in ever since we told you that Anna Gu was selling it. If you look very carefully, you can see the intricate stitch work that is reminiscent of the Rael E. Walters era back in the 20th century. I've been informed that Matt Gilbert of the JS organization has already put in a bid for this product. So if you want to get it, you have to call in right now. Call the number and ask to speak to Mr. Bad Boy Patch. We have saved the best for last. There is one product that we have here today that we know that everybody has been clamoring for. The phone lines have been ringing off the hook because Anixia has brought out another one of her fabled spoons. You might be wondering why is this spoon worth such a lot of money? You see Sloan Rockefeller was the first one to design a spoon just like this. And after that one soared in popularity, it became the go-to spoon for Nestor Ailman and Joshua Knapp, the two most famous spoon users in the world. If you would like to get this spoon today, it will cost you only 35 Dugschnuglis. That is 35 Dugschnuglis, the currency of Spoonland Australia. That's all we have time for today. Uh, if you have not realized, this is an elaborate patron shout out. 
And you're still doing the accent. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't know if it's any good, but you know, it's an accent. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I should have done a different accent for each one and just made like start with an accent that I can vaguely do, and then just descends into like a really bad one. If you are a patron, thank you for supporting the channel. If you're not a patron, then sign up at the uh, the VIP tier, and you can get your name read out in one of these like this. Each one's different. We don't even know what they're going to be until we film them on the day, for the most part. But I've had fun with my uh, reactions. Yeah, and you, my you, look, you look like you're having fun in my yeah. peripherals. Just yeah, see you, you moving around. Fun editing this one back. <sighs> Thanks for watching.